This man is one of the richest in the world. A legend in his own time, he is hereditary ruler of a wild and beautiful land. He is His Imperial Majesty, the Shah and Shah of Iran, King of Kings. Below him, the country that he is making into one of the richest and most powerful on earth. This is Iran, once called Persia. 3,500 years of civilization which has left a beautiful and indelible mark on the face of this land that lies on the threshold of Asia. This too is Persia, now called Iran. Nearly 4,000 years ago, the Aryan tribes came to Persia and gave it its modern name, Iran. They little knew that the arid deserts over which they journeyed, looking longingly towards the horizon for the green relief of the next oasis, would one day make Iran rich and powerful. For deep below the sands, which bake by day and freeze by night, lay nature's enormous reservoir of energy. Millions of years before man set foot on the planet Earth, tropical forests flourished here, absorbing the energy of the sun, taking and storing it as they died down, to be buried eventually beneath the remorseless shifting sands of the desert. The millennium passed and modern man learned to tap the hidden source of energy on which the whole earth now relies.
gold flows out across the desert. Without it, the very world would cease to go round. Refineries the size of small towns work night and day. Ships as big as floating islands carry it to the oil-hungry nations of the world. And as the oil flows out, the money flows in. How is this wealth to be spent? What does a nation do with riches on such an incredible scale? This palace is wallpapered in solid gold. A hundred thousand droplets of the purest crystal make up each of its chandeliers. But this opulence was not bought with the oil money. This is the inheritance of 30 centuries. Some of the ancient wonders of the world, an awe-inspiring feast of glittering magnificence. The oil money is spent on more mundane, but more important things. Iran has a revolution on her hands. It's been going on now for more than 10 years, but not a drop of blood has been spilt. In fact, it was started by the Shah himself. So the Iranians call it the King's Revolution. It's not every day that a revolution is started by the ruler of a nation, but that's precisely what His Imperial Majesty did. He decided it was time that Persia joined the 20th century. He rules with complete authority, which means he can get things done, fast. Like so many countries, Iran was virtually feudal. The peasants slaved on the land for absentee landlords who rewarded them by taking almost all their produce as rent. In 1963, the Shah instigated land reform. By royal proclamation, the state bought out the greedy landowners and gave back the land to the people who worked on it. The plough this farmer is using may be primitive beyond belief, but the soil it's turning belongs to him and him alone. Next month, he gets his first tractor. It'll come from his local cooperative, and the state will help him pay for it. The money to do this comes from oil. Iran has thousands of square miles of desert. It's always been short of water. These ancient underground irrigations, called kanats, were tunneled for miles below the desert. Droplets of water condensed on the roof, enough to make a stream and bring fertility to the parched land. Modern technology can do it even better. This is the great dam at Des Gorge, one of many. Its elegant strength contains the waters of the third largest man-made lake in the world. Its humming turbines bring much needed energy to the surrounding countryside and below it, the desert is coming back to life. Dams like this are not cheap. The money to build them comes from oil. In a desert village a thousand miles from Tehran, the kids are going to morning school. When the Shah came to power, he determined to conquer one of the most persistent ailments of a developing nation, widespread illiteracy. So he founded the Literacy Corps. Every Iranian young man and some women have to do two years military service. If they're already reasonably educated, they don't march up and down the whole time. Instead, they go out and teach people less fortunate to read and write. That's surprisingly basic essential to joining the modern world. It's quite incredible. Almost a whole army dedicated to educating people. It's all very military, but it gets results. The Literacy Corps was so successful that the idea has been extended. The Health Corps brings medical aid and doctors to areas where doctors are thin on the ground, to say the least. It costs a lot of money to do this. It all comes from oil.
Persian women kissed farewell to their yashmaks and perda a long time ago. Now, thanks to the king's revolution, they can vote, they're in parliament, and Tehran boasts the only woman police superintendent in the world. Oil refineries make a mess, use up precious oxygen, spoil the scenery. The Shah nationalized the forests, which were being exploited out of existence by greedy private owners. And now they're being replanted, especially around the refineries where they generate fresh oxygen and soften the landscape. Iran was one of the countries where Concord showed off its paces during its round-the-world sales tour. The Shah's interest in this technological marvel was more than casual. His skill as a pilot allowed him to become one of that elite band who have actually flown the world's first supersonic airliner. Iran is amazingly large. It's bigger than Britain, France and Germany put together. One third is desert. That's an area the size of France. Her borders stretch from the edge of the turbulent Middle East to the remote vastness of Russia and the mysterious wilderness of Afghanistan. Iran is joining the 20th century with an urgent vitality and roads are the arterial links essential to a modern nation. Magnificent highways are being built where only a few years ago any self-respecting mountain goat would have given up. Iran is living history and breathtaking beauty. It's a unique place to visit and more and more people are realizing just that. Like so many countries, Iran appreciates that tourism is a very good thing. It brings foreign currency. More important, it brings understanding and friendliness. Tehran International Airport is slap bang on one of the world's main jet highways, an international crossroads of the sky. From north, south, east and west, the big birds roll in, bringing businessmen, reuniting families and disembarking people who have simply come for a holiday to sample the delights of one of the world's most beautiful and exotic lands. The very size of Iran makes it a land of contrasts. There's the Costa Caviar, mile upon mile of unspoilt golden sands on the coast of the Caspian, that vast inland sea where swims the fabled sturgeon with her belly full of royal caviar. An hour later, you can keep company with the golden eagles in the remote fastness of Mount Damavand, the highest peak in Asia outside the Himalayas. You can even go skiing. Persia invented the bazaar. It's their word for market. And a stroll through a bazaar like this one at Isfahan is an experience in itself. And of course, there are the famous Persian carpets, acres of them. Even here, they're not cheap. But bargaining is part of the Eastern way of life. And if you keep your cool, well, your living room floor could end up the envy of your neighbors. A cornucopian Aladdin's cave, full of every conceivable article that man's ingenuity has devised, from humble candlesticks to handmade treasures of shimmering complexity.
If you're feeling adventurous, you can play Lawrence of Arabia and go trekking across the desert, although in a good deal more comfort. Persepolis, the capital of ancient Persia. 3,000 years ago, ambassadors from all the known world journeyed here to pay the respects of their monarch to the King of Kings. They were received in the Hall of a Thousand Columns, once one of the wonders of the world. Persepolis was destroyed by Alexander the Great 300 years before the birth of Christ. It is said that he regretted it for the rest of his life. Iran is a land of tradition, beauty and history. Even the hotels reflect this passionate perfection. This is the courtyard of the Shah Abbas Hotel at Isfahan, one of the world's truly great international hotels. It was once a royal palace. Now completely restored, it's again fit for kings to stay in. House of Strength, a curious mixture of religion and wrestling. The origins of their nightly rituals in strangely geometric auditoriums are lost in time, but the age-old symbolism of the power they unleash is a fitting comment on the striving of modern Iran. the oil. It might be realistic to remember that almost alone amongst the oil producing countries of the Middle East, Iran looks upon Britain as a friend and as an expanding market for our goods. <laughs> 